grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I want to talk about spiritual gifts, the ones that have been listed in Romans chapter 12, the reading that we just heard. And it's part of our understanding of who we are in Christ, what our responsibility is, if you like, in response to the grace that we receive from Jesus. Remember, Christ is always the one who takes the initiative. Our God chose us. Our God comes to us. It is nothing that we can do to earn his favour, nor anything that we can do to generate salvation. It's by his action that we are drawn into his community. It's by his action and his action alone that we have salvation. We know this. And in response to that, Paul talks in Romans chapter 12 about what are some of the responsibilities that we have as the people of God. And in that first part, quite well known, the very beginning of Romans chapter 12, where it says, do not be conformed to the world. In other words, we are called to be different. We're called to be different than other people who do not have Jesus in their life. If we truly are disciples, and if Christ means something to us, we will look different. People will know who we are. People know that I am Connie's husband. They know that because I tell them, I talk about it. You don't have to be around me for too long to find out the person to whom I'm married, right? You don't have to be around me too long to know that I am Teddy's granddad. Is that true as well? That's very true. You know who I am. I am different. People will know there is something that distinguishes me because I have these special relationships. Well, we are transformed by God's Holy Spirit. We are different, very different, because we are Christians. Doesn't mean that we are some kooks, right? We don't go out wearing cheesecloths and, and going, ah, 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 here. That's not what we have to do is, I couldn't do that. I'm a bit too conservative to do that. That's not my nature. But I am different. I lived some part of my life without Christ and some part with, and I know that they are different. We look different. We think different. And I think this is the really important point. We are transformed by the renewing of the mind. In other words, the Word of God continues to change our minds, how we think. Because anybody who knows anything at all about um, psychology knows that how you think, how you act, how you feel, they're all related. And if you can change any one of those, it affects the rest. God knew this way before there was anything called cognitive behavioral therapy, way before that. He knew that being in the Word, by admitting that the Word of God is sovereign in our life and the Word of God has power by His Holy Spirit, our thoughts are changed. It means our actions change, our feelings change, which feed back into how we read the Word, which feed back, in, back into how we operate. So it becomes a wonderful loop, a wonderful loop of discipleship where the word of God is the first thing that, the first thing that pushes or starts this feedback. And we become different. And see, one of the things that we know is that we are in the image of God. That's true for all creation. But how many people feel like they are in the image of God? The Word of God says that we are created in God's image. How many days do you feel like you're in God's image? And how many days do you feel like perhaps you are a little less? Maybe that image is tarnished or crushed. That image might be um, one that hasn't, isn't really reflective of God. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. How many days do you get up and go... Hallelujah, Lord, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit today. I'll venture that not one of you did that this week. I'll bet none of you did that, not one. And do you know that we have been given the privilege to work alongside of Christ to accomplish his plan? That's true. That's what we've been given. He says, come with me because you, I've chosen you 
to partner with me in my plan for the world. And we forget all of that. We get up in the morning and we turn on the news and we go, COVID again. Oh. And all of a sudden, we hear that there's another 25 cases of COVID and we've forgotten completely. But we are in the image of God. We are filled with the Spirit and we have a mission that he has called us to do. So I would say to each one of us, tomorrow, the next day, during the week, wouldn't it be lovely if we got up in the morning and said, hey, I can renew my mind, which will change what I do and change how I feel. When I get up in the morning and I say, I am a child of God in his image. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. And today I am partnering with him in his mission. And I can't wait to see where that leads. How do you reckon that will change our day? Guarantee that will change our day if we start that way. And that's a fairly easy thing to do. If we supplement that with saying, I want to be in the word of God and to hear that word and I want that word to penetrate my soul, well then, wow, we'll see even more extraordinary things happen. So we are transformed and suddenly we look different. And one of the ways that we look different is by exercising our spiritual gifts. Remember I talked about that last week and I want to spend a little bit of time this morning uh, looking at spiritual gifts. Now, in Romans chapter 7, that's not an exhaustive list at all of spiritual gifts. There are a lot of things that have been left out. Speaking in tongues, miracles, healing, all these things have been left, at, left out. Administration has been left out. And goodness me, don't we need that as a gift, right? I'm not saying it's exhaustive. But what Paul says is to have a healthy body, to have a healthy church, you will see these things. These seven things that he lists will be evident. And he also says that each one of us will certainly have at least one of these gifts. And so um, I want to have a look at that piece of scripture, if I could have it up there. And so here are the seven things. If you see on the screen now, you'll see the... the um, the seven gifts that are listed there, prophecy, serving, teaching, encouragement, giving, leadership, and mercy. And those seven gifts, if you like, will be evident because we are the body of Christ. He's released his spirit. And if we are healthy, if we are a healthy Mr. Potato Head with all our bits in the right spot, you will see those. You'll be able to come into our community and you will be able to witness this. If we are an unhealthy body and all we have is everybody wants to serve and nothing else, we'll look like a potato head with all eyes. That's it. Rather scary rather than helpful, right? But we shouldn't be put off by these. When we read this, the Holy Spirit is touching our heart and saying, wow, wow. I'm calling each one of you. Where do we fit in the body of Christ? Which one of these gifts resonates with us? Because they're all important. They're all important to the, the kingdom and they're all important to the mission that God has put uh, in front of us individually and as a community. I think about prophecy. Sometimes that can be a bit scary. <gasps> prophecy. But it's not scary at all. In fact... The Christian church believes strongly in prophecy. Paul says, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, particularly the gift of prophecy. He puts it right at the top. He says, this is important because prophecy is simply taking the word of God and applying it to a situation today, saying, I'm going to speak God's word into this situation. So in some respects... What I'm doing now, bringing the word of God to you in this situation, is prophecy. And other times it's somebody saying, I hear your situation. I know you. Let me bring God's word into this. It's not about us trying to invent something new. It's saying God's revelation is full in the Bible. There is nothing to be added to it, but let me use the tools that I've got and let me apply it skillfully to your situation. It's a wonderful thing. And when we receive prophetic ministry, when somebody comes and brings the word of God personally into our life, that can be quite transformational. Do you remember last year?
we had a teaching weekend where we had some ladies talking about prophecy. Do you remember that, some of you? Do you remember that they couldn't get away because people were saying, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, because not only did they give us some teaching, but they said, if you'd like to come up, let me bring the word of God to you personally. Those poor young women were exhausted because of all of you. And they'll be coming back next year as well to, to, to follow up. But this is a really important ministry. As the church, we need to recognize that some people have this gift and we need to expose ourselves to it. Because we all hunger for that intimate word of God into our life. And it's good. I mean, if it happened every week, then all of a sudden we'd become dependent on somebody else. And God doesn't want that. He wants us to be in control of our own spiritual growth. But he does want us to seek out prophetic ministry from time to time. And that's why we're going to have that another teaching weekend next year. We we're going to have it this year, but guess what? COVID. So that'll be next year. We'll have a teach. It'll probably be early on uh, in the year. That's important. And if you think that, hey, maybe God's calling me to that ministry, then you need to talk to me because it's a really important ministry for the church. But what about service? Service is not complicated and it means what it says. Sometimes we read the Bible and go, oh, what does that mean? Well, this is pretty straightforward. Serve. It just means allowing the gifts that we've got, whatever capacity, to be used for the benefit of other people. And sometimes it means doing things that we wouldn't necessarily want to do. Sometimes it can be some of the most mundane things. Sometimes it can be the most exciting things in the world. But it's saying, here's the need, and if I've got the gift of service, here is the need, I see the need, and I am going to be available. Service is simply saying, here is a need, I am available, and surely each one of us can avail ourselves of that gift. That's a pretty cool one. And teaching. Do you know everybody has the capacity to be a teacher? You, well, maybe not in a classroom of 25 primary school kids. That's a particular skill. But every one of us has the capacity to teach somebody else. If you know something... Or if you've had an experience in something that somebody else hasn't and they want it, you can be a teacher. Simple as that. You don't have, any, have to have any particular skills. You simply need to say, I have something. You want it and I care for you and I will bring it to you in a way that you can understand. Simple as that. And do you know parents teach their kids all the time? I am not a teacher, but I've taught my children. You are not teachers. You don't have an accreditation, or some of you are, but you know, most of you are not teachers, but you've taught your children. And isn't it interesting? I think about some of the teaching that I did for my children was at the dinner table when they said, Tell me about this, tell me about that. How many times have your kids said, Tell me the story about? Well, our kids pull out our wedding album and they open it up and say, Oh, look at your wedding, look at this. Because we didn't have a video, we had photographs in a thing. This is a long time ago when we were married. And the kids went through that. Because they want to know. Teaching is important so that they know the basics and they know from where they come. That's true for us in the Christian church. It's a good thing if God calls us to bring that knowledge of who we are and where we've come from in a way that is simple for other people to understand. If you've got that, then it's something you should desire. Encouragement, oh my goodness, anybody can be an encourager, but some people have a special gift at it. You've met those people that all of a sudden you're around them and you walk away and go, I feel great, because an encourager will see something special about you. You may not see it today, but they'll always find something special about you and they will, it's not faint praise and it's not false praise, they genuinely say, I see that in you and I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to keep using that. Um, do you know how I told you before that we do exercise, we do boxing, so do you too and some other people as well. And when I first started, 
boxing, I almost, um, I, I was almost a bit discouraged because all these other people were better than me and, you know, and I was exhausted after one session. And then there was a guy who was quite experienced and they parted, partnered me up with him and he said, you're not doing it right. You've got to do this and you've got to do that, but I see great promise in you. You've got the ability to do this. And he was with me for three or four sessions and he encouraged me because he said, I can see you can do this really well. He also said, I can see you need some help here, so let me come and help you in that area, but I can see you can do this. And now I wanted to go back because somebody saw that I could do this well, so I wanted to do it again. You can do that with each other. How about we do that every now and again? Oh, I can see that. Let me encourage you, and then we want to do it again and again. And giving, again, that's fairly obvious, isn't it? We have resources, and sometimes other people need those resources, and we say, hey, I've got the gift of generosity, I've got the gift of giving because God has given me plenty and I choose to use my abundance for the kingdom of God. Very straightforward. Leadership is interesting. Everybody needs good leadership. And I'd say that leadership is one of the most difficult gifts. I worked... Did you know that I had a proper job before I started as a pastor? You're aware of that, don't you? There was a time where I went to work in the morning and I had a proper job. For many years, I went for work. Anyway, I worked in a bank, in a big international bank, a couple of them. And I saw plenty of bosses. I only saw one leader in all of my time. I saw plenty of people that said, I am the boss. I only saw one person who was a true leader. And that particular person, and he was a man, I'm not being sexist, but that particular guy, he made me feel like I had something to offer. He identified my skill and he said, I'm going to give you what you need to make a difference. He also made all of us aware of where we're going. This is where we're going and this is your part in it and I need you and this is how we're going to go. And what's more, he made us feel secure. If I made a mistake, he didn't say, that's your fault. He said, I don't care about that. I'm thrilled that you're out there trying to make the goal. Let's get behind you with that mistake and just push forward and grabbed everybody. That's leadership. Giving me the direction. Making me feel safe to go out there and take risks and do the job. And saying, whatever you need, <coughs> whatever you need, I will give you. I only saw one of those, despite the fact that I had many bosses. I bet that's true for you too. You've had many bosses, I doubt know how many leaders you've really seen in your life. But we are fortunate here because we've got great leaders in this community. And if you feel that God has put that on your heart, something you have to step forward. Lastly, of course, um, it's mercy. Mercy is that ability to open up your heart, to give your time to help other people. It's that idea that I will hurt with you. I will walk with you through the tough times. I will be your God's presence with you at that time. And of course we need that because isn't it just as simple as God calls us to love one another? So if we look at these seven spiritual gifts... I'm not saying they're exhaustive because God can do all sorts of other spiritual gifts, but we will find these spiritual gifts in a healthy community. And I would encourage us all, as we're renewed, as our minds and our hearts are renewed as the people of God, that we desire these gifts. And I would encourage you to have a look at this again. Have a look through the scripture. Say, hey, you know, which one of these gifts resonates with me? Because for sure... There's at least one of those because they're like the basic gifts that each community, I would say not just community, each family. You have a look at your own family. We need these things. Who's going to speak God's word into that? Who's going to teach? Who's going to give sacrificially? Who's going to serve? Who's going to lead? All these things to be a healthy organization, to be a healthy uh, um, a group of people in the presence of God. These things will be evident. So I pray 
that we would know these gifts, we would see the opportunity, and we would be bold and use these gifts. Why don't we pray? Lord, thank you that you've given us a description of what your bride looks like, the church. And we know that each one of us has different gifts, Lord, and yet we are called to the same purpose. As we see these seven gifts that were mentioned by the Apostle Paul in Romans, may you move our heart to see how we fit, to see which one of those gifts resonates with us so that we can serve you, serve your people and bring glory to you. In your holy name we pray.